Right, so Karina Gould has been testifying this morning at the public inquiry into foreign interference in the 2019 and 2021 elections. As the former minister of democratic institutions, Gould was tasked with curbing foreign meddling into Canada's election, a task that she says came with a steep learning curve and required a high level of discretion. Because if they make a decision to disclose something publicly, they're effectively letting the foreign actor know that they know what they're doing. And so they could lose a source, that foreign actor could change what they're doing, they could go further underground. And so we need to be really thoughtful and mindful about how and when and what is released um, publicly, which also played a really big part in the development of the plan. All right, CTV's Mike LeCouture is at the Interference Inquiry for us this morning. He joins me now for a recap of what we have heard so far. And Mike, mm -hmm. uh, one of the phrases that she talked a lot about was the so-called Obama dilemma. Dilemma. Why was that crucial to her testimony today? Yeah, it refers back to 2016 during the U.S. presidential campaign that then-President Barack Obama um, was made aware of intelligence that Russia was trying to meddle in that election. And he was actually uh, having that information but doing nothing about it. And part of the reason was that they, can, they were concerned that even the act of going public with that type of information would influence the election in one way or another. So with that as sort of the lens through which the look at foreign interference, the Canadian government was trying to develop their own ability and their own protocol for informing people. Interesting in picking up on that clip that you just mentioned uh, there, Marcia, from Karina Gould, not only did she talk about the concern about going public and making sure that if they did go public that they had to be sure because they would force people more underground. She noted that foreign actors are more than likely and almost assuredly watching these proceedings now and adjusting what they will do going forward because they are getting a really inside look to the intelligence apparatus and uh, what is being flagged and what is not being flagged. Uh, but back to that point of the Obama dilemma, it was with that lens that they were looking at foreign interference and really going into the 2019 election, what we were hearing from Karina Gould is that they, th they thought that the biggest threat at the time was from Russia because of what they had seen happen in that U.S. election. Uh, not to say that they weren't watching the PRC, the People's Republic of China, but certainly um, that is what they thought going into it. She did get a lot of briefings, about seven briefings um, in, in the space of about 18 months uh, where she was told about election interference, but also she was really given, Marcia, sort of this large overview, as she was saying, not the granular details um, that a lot of people are asking her about here. And it's with that that she is trying to sort of have people understand what she was doing, setting up the processes and making sure that Canada was set up for a free and fair election, which she continues to say, and this is the line from the government that they have said for many, many years now, is that those elections, 2019 and 2021, were conducted in a free and fair manner. Okay, so she is it's just about to wrap up her testimony. We've seen uh, Bill Blair arrive. Mike, what mm -hmm. is your main takeaway from what we heard today from Karina Gould and how does it sort of set the stage for the Prime Minister's testimony later this afternoon? Yeah, essentially at her level, she was trying to have this sort of uh, institutionalized and uh, a really a, a situation where they could catch foreign interference and be on guard for it. But certainly it didn't sound like Karina Gould was getting the detail uh, that we are seeing from a lot of these CSIS reports. She was really briefed in sort of a very much overview type of uh, feeling. Um, and I think that now we are going to start to see with these other ministers whether or not they were getting those sort of granular details about it. Um, but in terms of setting up for the prime minister, I think that will really sort of be a question digging in. What did he know? What in t what types of information was transmitted to him, especially from CSIS uh, in, in those briefings that were spoken about yesterday with the Prime Minister's staff and through the Prime Minister's office? Did he get that level of detail that we we're seeing in some of these briefings that his staff say were just speaking notes and that may not have actually gotten to the Prime Minister's ears, Marcia? Mike, look a tour for us. Mike, thanks for following along and bringing us all of that. Really appreciate it.